Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the ASUS AMD Radeon HD 6670. Released in 2011, this one has never been opened, but that is about to change. The 6670 replaced 2010's 5670 as the go-to $100 mid-range graphics card and offered a 15% performance increase over its predecessor, a difference that in real-world gaming scenarios is probably even more negligible these days. So let's get this brand new decade old graphics card opened and tested. So you may have seen from the box that this is the 1GB GDDR5 version. There are 2GB versions available but I think they all use GDDR3 VRAM which means that they will likely perform worse than this 1GB GDDR5 card. So we haven't got any fancy inner packaging here, just a plain white box which is no surprise as this was a $100 part. Here in the UK it cost around £85. In the box we've got a VGA to DVI adapter which you certainly won't see inside most modern graphics card packages. What I like about the 6670 and something I like about the 5672 is the lack of any power connectors. This made it all the more tempting 10 years ago as it could turn any home or office PC into a gaming machine with ease and I guess that still applies today. Also included is the installation manual and driver disc. I love the old photos of the ancient systems inside these manuals. Very nostalgic. So let's get the card out of the anti-static packaging for a closer look. Now from what I recall, ASUS used the same heatsink on both this and their 6770, which was the better card to go for if you had 30 extra dollars to spend and a spare 6 pin power connector. So then let's get the 6670 into our system for what will actually be the first time it's been in any system. This model is 10 megahertz faster than reference and driver support ended in 2016 so I don't expect much here especially considering it's a one gigabyte card but let's see what it can do. So the first game I tested today is Fallout 4. This was at 720p with the low preset though I did have TAA enabled instead of FXAA as it helps to eliminate some of those jagged edges. Now I'm just wandering around the Cambridge area here. I believe it's called the police station area which can be quite system intensive. I wasn't expecting uh, the ghouls here so I will just take care of those and uh, as you can see our frame rate is pretty much dropping as we do so although on average we were able to retain a plus 30 fps which for a one gig card really isn't too bad you can see that the temperature hovers around 40 degrees as well and although our card is essentially maxing out here the temperature doesn't really get too high so the small single fan cooler is more than adequate for this old mid-range thing and the vram usage as expected is getting close to one gig. The frame rate now, closer to 40 in some areas, so overall, it's really not too bad. Now when it comes to Fortnite, I actually use the performance mode. This is the new API mode that allows you to run the game with older and weaker graphics cards, but it does run a lot better on PC when you do this, and it is ideal for cards such as the 667, oh, and I've died. Now as you can probably tell this is very much a 720p gaming card these days. Now these aren't even new games that I've tested so far but these pretty much represent what you should be able to expect from the 6670 in terms of what you can play. GTA 5 is a pretty old game these days. 2015 I believe it came out on the PC so 5 or 6 years old and because of this it does run quite well on the 6670 from AMD though you will still have to resort to 720p resolution for a closer to 60 fps experience though that target frame rate is still just out of reach. We're also using the normal settings which is equivalent to other games low settings and any forms of MSAA 
were turned off and all the advanced options were off too. Give me your car. Stop. Stop. He's not he's not stopping. Never mind. Let's just uh let's just take these out and uh okay, almost got run over there. <laughs> let's move on to our next game and see what else this can do. Alright, so in Overwatch now. Um here we are just running around, not really doing much here. Um now, the figures I'm going to put up on screen are taken from an online game. This footage is from a versus AI game. I do this because it's just easier to capture. The footage is more fluent than me just getting wiped out every five seconds. But to be honest, the performance, whether you're playing online or against bots, is identical from what I've found. Here at 720p once again, with the low preset and FXAA enabled with 100% resolution scaling, I should add so full 1280 by 720 we were seeing a decent 80 or so FPS average, and on occasion, like now, the frame rate will actually shoot up above 100 FPS. It is quite rare to see, but it does happen, and it's actually more common to see the frame rate go up to 90 or 100 FPS than it is to see it drop below 60. Where that isn't quite so true is unfortunately Rainbow Six Siege here. Now we are playing a lone wolf training mission here. The figures on screen are taken from a combination of a few online games. The footage is from the lone wolf gameplay scenario here simply because you know it's easier to capture and because I used a few games to actually achieve these figures well there wasn't an exact gameplay that represented um, what caused these frame rates. If, if you get what I mean, that was probably a really long way of saying it, but let's take out a few more of these guys. Or not. <laughs> or not. Come on, we're running at 25% res scaling here, and this is necessary, oh dear, in order to achieve sort of playable frame rates. Okay, so finally then we have the Witcher 3. Here we are outside Novigrad. This is a bit of a disaster. Um, the Witcher 3, although it does run quite well on some older cards from within... Okay, let's say some weaker cards from within the last four or five years. It can be quite surprising and unpredictable when it comes to running on certain hardware. For example, I thought it would do better on the 6670 here. We are running at 720p once again with the low graphical preset and the low post-processing preset. That's what the PP stands for in the, uh, <laughs> the on-screen figures there. But sometimes the game will drop to about 10 FPS. There are certain areas, like here, where it will go up towards 30, but it never quite hits that. And overall, yeah, it's a bit of a disastrous experience, but I think that's to be expected with this GPU. It's missed its time to shine. There was a certain period in time where this would have been an ideal budget option at around $100 or £100 or €100 Euros or whatever. And for this to sit in the box throughout that time, well, it is a bit of a shame. So with these cards, I like to sell them off after I'm done testing them, let them go to a good home, and hopefully someone else can get some enjoyment out of them. But yeah, the 6670 was the card I wanted when I had a 5670 years ago, a 512 megabyte card. So I'm glad I got to play around with this Asus one today. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching. So if you did, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.